But I ho, I'm Mad Fish Magpie, and welcome to the Joy of Painting Game. Today we are going to do a painting inspired by a fabulous screenshot from No Man's Sky by Banana Tom. I have been waiting for a while to do this picture ever since I saw it. It's so cool. Uh, you guys can see it right down there. What a cool picture, right? I love the jet stream and the swirl pattern. I have no idea how you caught that image, Tom, but it's super cool. So can't wait to paint it. I am going to do a little different color background just to give it a little bit more contrast and really make that ship pop out. So tuning in with comments here. Hi, Warfie, Dimash, uh, Galarak, KJ, Daryl, Rod. Great to see you all. Thanks for being here right at the top of the stream. Without further ado, I think I'm going to make our space background purple. One of my favorite colors. And we'll need a good yellow for that ship. Got my treasure trove of paint here. You're going to also need a cup of water, some brushes, and your favorite beverage nearby. And of course, a palette for your paint. Someone has been painting with my paints that wasn't me, because they're all a jumble. I wonder who that could be. Uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed the last episode. I know it was super special. Um, I really, um, I really, you know, just really let my true colors shine in that episode. So be sure to check it out. Um, the one just a week previous from now. Oh, goodness. It's the paint, I swear. <laughs> I like to use acrylic paints. <laughs> they dry really quickly, and so if you make little mistakes, they're really easy to cover up. <laughs> so let's go to our close-up shot of our canvas. So first, I'm going to get the whole canvas just a little bit wet. Oh, it's this one. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get the whole canvas wet so that our background color goes on really nice and smooth. And a lot of people will use like a actual acrylic medium that will bond better with your acrylic paint. but Water will work for now. I want this to go a little faster, so I'm going to use a bigger brush. Just big, big strokes. There's nothing to even mess up at this point but you're never going to mess up. Just everything you do is art. No matter whether you're a beginner or a master painter or you haven't painted in 10 years, just putting the brush to your canvas will feel so good. Hi, Mighty Monarch and Moose. Great to have you. Thanks for coming by. How's it going? It's going good. Your dress is gorgeous. Thank you. We're going to have a nice, pretty, purple space solar system that these sentinels have been called to. I'm really enjoying the how watery I made this canvas and that the colors just Filling down is pretty cool.
In the background, let's show an up close of this awesome picture that Banana Tom took. You can see all the details. Detail that was most striking to me. I immediately thought when I saw it, I've got to paint that. And it does look super intimidating. That sentinel is evil. Or is it? I don't know. Such a ongoing debate. If you want a more pigmented background, use less water. I really like this. Now I'm using big long strokes to carry the paint all the way across, but we're going to give it a little texture here in a minute with a paper towel to kind of bring out that nebula quality. While it's still waiting to dry, throw that away. Hmm. I towel, didn't I? Would you grab me one, sir? <laughs> We're not even on that camera. <laughs> so I'm gonna get my paper towel and then we're gonna take little dabbing motions. Actually, my, my lovely assistant, Smash, is going to get me a paper towel. Hi, Joker, welcome. Thanks for coming by. You got the difference between the last room and this one. You remembered to put lipstick on today. Yes, yeah, the only difference. The only difference. I don't know. What a difference a day makes. <laughs> so, just with your regular paper towel, you're going to give it a little crumble. And so it's not got too many flat surface areas, just really mooshed. And then. Set it up in your hand so it's got nice, lots of wrinkles going on on the side that you're going to touch to the canvas. It's a little difference, but it's noticeable. <laughs> so, love the purple for the background. Yeah, isn't that great? Hey, everybody who came by, hi, Meow Meow Ten. What a difference lipstick makes. It's true. It can be just an immediate turnaround. Gonna hold this so it doesn't make a big clatter. But we can just go around the paint like a nebula, you know, try to go in a not in a pattern, just and I move the paper towel around a bit too so it doesn't look too patternistic. I might leave some of these brush strokes because they're kind of cool. But just break up those brush strokes that we could see. And we're just left with a really cool nebulous face look. So let's take a look at that picture of Tom's one more time for the newcomers. Big and large, this is the picture that I have been waiting a while to uh, to paint this picture ever since I saw it. It's super cool. We're going to definitely have some asteroids in this picture. We're going to do ship. I think I'm going to leave out the planet we see just in that bottom left corner and maybe throw a bit of planet in the opposite upper right hand side just to balance out the feeling of the ship framing it 
with the asteroids on the left and maybe a sliver of planet on the right side. I think that'll be my plan. So we're going to go in with some asteroid action first because this isn't quite dry yet, but I think we can get away with some asteroids while that's still wet. Cobra MK3 from Elite Dangerous. <laughs> At least you're having better luck keeping the flower in your stunt double struggle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she needs to grow out her hair. So we'll go for asteroids in a gray tone with. I'm thinking maybe some gold and silver, just to make it spicy and fun. Getting a bunch of my colors out. Look at my yummy colors. Mm. We're going to use all of these, I think, not just in the asteroids. I pulled a bunch for the other items, subject matter we talked about. So right now I'm just going to stick with my gray, gold, and silver here. We'll start with the gray. I think I thought. This is kind of watered down gray, so I'm going to be really careful in how much I put on my palette. Yeah, super watered down. This happens when I've been doing some Jackson Pollock type paintings and trying to use the very last inch of paint at the bottom of my bottle. I'll put in a little water, shake it all up, and then I'm able to flush it around. For some more abstract art, which is a lot of fun. So I think that I'm going to mix in a little black just to thicken that gray up a little bit and make it darker. That was super cool against it. I'm going to mix up that black into the gray. I'm not even going to fully mix them so that I have uneven color tones on my brush. And see how that looks for our asteroids over here in the left. I'm using a little fan brush to get some cool texture for these asteroids. The peppering of asteroid and try to clump some and try to make them different shapes if you can. Otherwise, it'll look like polka dots. And I'm really trying hard to make a polka dot dress, let me tell you. So hard for me to not want to make them evenly spaced. <laughs> so you just have to intentionally then clump if you're guilty of that compulsion as I am. Maybe make one kind of way big one. Anything you don't like, you can always come back in with your background color and touch up a little bit. There. I think if I mess with it more, I'll, I'll overdo it and not like it anymore. So sometimes it's good to just stop and wait and then you can add more later. 
So we'll let that dry. We're gonna come back in and spice them up with gold and silver when they have had a little time. Now I want to line out the outline of the sentinel ship. That's a really nice geometric shape. So you want to use a brush that has a flat edge so you can use it in the thin direction to make a nice line. This one's I'm gonna see if I don't have one that's a little um, fresher and not has the big gaping hole in the middle of the bristles. Yeah, this will be much nicer for trying to make some lines. And we'll be painting over with a lot of different colors coming up. So we're just going to do the outline. Hey, Tom, you recognize this picture? I love it. I'm so excited to paint it today. Thanks for coming by. I didn't have Discord running, so didn't get a notification. Oh, well, YouTube must be slacking. Welcome, Nella. Thanks for coming by. One of the old um, flying airplanes I used to fold. It was my best flyer, and it's totally kind of a similar shape. <laughs> so, what we've got the basic shape is kind of a triangle, but with some squared off edges. So, we'll imagine it nose is stuck a little bit over the asteroid area. I'm going to start with a little, just a small line to give myself the nose, and then I can bring my angles out from there. It has a little flared wing tip, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to make a nice, good geometric shave off there. We'll try to bring the other bit out. Watch there. Ship doesn't just go flat across. It does have tiny little angles, so we're going to do our best. The nose straight across. That's the back there. See how I went a little past where these end? I'm looking. You can use your brush to kind of check straight lines and help your brain visualize where you want to go. So this does two little angles up. Good enough. And I just have these little wings, wing tips that come out. The metal of the ship. So, right off the middle butt back, a square shape. Uh, that kind of goes into another square shape that has some interesting angles. And there will be some red, some white, and then a little black tip nose.
pupils actually jut out a little further from the nose. So I'm just going to thicken up that line towards the outside. up close. You want to be closer to the brush stroke. Hi, Bobby McGee. Welcome to the chat. Thanks for being here. I'm switching back and forth between my up close picture on my uh, pad here and your guys' chat. So forgive me if I miss a few things while I'm doing these details on the ship. I gotta look really up close. So we got some blasters coming out the front. see because of the asteroid behind it. So I may go in and sort of help to make those pop with the gold and silver on the asteroid. Then we've got the big yellow area comes from this angle here and this angle here. And everything outside of that is a metal black color mostly. So I'm going to complete line up to the wing. Kind of an angle in here. Bit of a jut in. as a finishing touch.
white because yellow paint is naturally on its own very sheer and see-through. So we're going to put a base of white down to paint our yellow on top up. That'll be one of our next steps. I did talk about maybe putting a sliver of planet over here, so I'm going to put the base down for that as well. That's going to be with white. Um, Mike keeps cutting. Sounds like a short. Yeah. Okay. How long has that been happening? How long has that been happening? Is that from the beginning of the stream? It's whenever you turn your head to the right. like that when I'm painting. Okay. We'll figure that out for next time, guys. Sorry. for a second. Hope you don't need new headphones. These were cheap. It's the paint, not me, I swear.
Does that help? We're going to take the white and do a base coat for our yellow, red, and white areas on the ship. the angle of one of those black lines so I just left it it dried and now we paint back over it and acrylic is just like an eraser For today and then maybe next time we'll try to use the mic on this camera right well we'll have to watch the whole thing to really be sure okay oh It's gonna have to do while it's here, and we'll try to figure other things out for next time.
So at this point, the asteroids are probably dry, so we're gonna go in with some silver and gold and spice them up a little bit. You're live on that. Okay. You can take off the headphones. It's not your mic anymore. Ooh. Just grabbing a few of my detail brushes here. We'll need a variety. So for the asteroids, I really want to get in some details. So we're using my really small brushes. So I think the silver will be really great to uh, make sure the little gun turrets on the ship pop out right here. I'm going to take my silver and go right around those areas. Asteroid's going to have a little shine now there, and we'll be able to see the turrets. I'm just gonna let the silver fade out into the darkness on the other half of the asteroid. So it's like the shine is coming from the shine of the planet and the ship. And I'm just kind of using a scumbling technique, just moving my brush in little circles. If some of the black paint from before isn't dry and the silver blends, that'll be really cool. That's not bad at all. Raccoon, 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 raccoon. Yeah, raccoon. Oh, it does look like a raccoon. <laughs> the little ship is adorable. So I'm kind of going in with this idea that the silver is rounding out the right-hand side of each asteroid. And then I'm going to go through with the gold and do kind of like little veins of ore.
actually kind of cool when the black isn't totally dry and it blends with the silver. For our little veins of gold, we'll just do little whirly streaks. I'm trying not to do too much of a pattern, just changing the angles of the streets with each asteroid. Sort of paying attention to the areas of the asteroid that had some of the solar system shining through still. And letting that be my organic guide for where the streaks should go. The bigger one's going to have a little more gold. That one got a lot. Those are cool. I'll show you guys a little up close. Aren't those neat? Now our asteroids have texture. And they stand apart from the ship, which is nice. So, raccoon. Uh, hmm? 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 raccoon. Oh, raccoon. I'll leave it a raccoon for a little bit more longer. I'm going to use some nice icy blue for the sliver of planet we have up there. Even if that white's not totally dry, it'll be nice to have a little scumbling effect with the light blue, and we'll get a fabulous Canada planet in the background. So I've got kind of a medium-sized circular brush for this. And we're just going to go in and do, like, we're brushing our teeth, just some little circles. It's okay if some of the background white shows through. Get a little bit of a dry brush. That's fine, too. That's kind of a nice texture. And if you leave a little sliver of the white, that we went in with will almost serve as atmosphere. And while that's wet, I think I'll take a tiny bit of white on this same brush with the blue and scumble back over so we get different varieties of blue. Did a quick dry brush along that line. I think that is even more of a nice glowing atmosphere. It was too harsh before, and with very little paint on that brush and a little swipe, we got a nice haziness to that edge.
So now we'll need our yellow. Say goodbye to Mr. Raccoon. Now he's just yellow raccoon. Hi, Biter Back. Great asteroids. Thanks, Nella. Looking ace, Maddie. Thanks, Moose. I love the purple background. I know, Daryl. It's so pretty. And yellow and purple to me are honestly one of the best contrasting color combinations. I really enjoy it. Really yellow and any cool color like a, a deep blue or... I just love contrasting colors. And yellow and purple happen to be one of my favorites. So in the original picture, you can see that the, hi, Captain, I missed you almost. <laughs> I just saw your uh, message there. Looking good so far, Manny. That was a cool dress you had last week. Thanks. It's one of my favorite dresses. <laughs> yeah, I was rocking it last week. Um, the, uh, what was I saying? Oh, the background in the original photo it's tough to see, like from especially from a distance, the border between the black outline of the ship and the background of the deep, deep blue, dark space. And so that's why I changed the background color so that the ship really pops, because that's the most exciting part about this picture. Banana Tom took this screenshot, and I have no idea how he got that swirl on the jet stream, but that was what I was just like, ah, I really got to try to paint that. So I'm using a small square flat tipped brush to bring my yellow in over the white. There is a little bit of red here, so we'll leave that. And then this is a little bit of white. I'm going to actually look at my detail painting. So forgive me, chat. I'm going to leave you for a moment. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So almost a straight line up of the white so the yellow comes in almost to the tip where this little black nose is so here we go we're going to bring in this yellow the yellow i'm using is a little um, more orangey than i want so i'm going to mix it with a little white before beginning just took a little bit of this yellow it's very thick as well this is kind of an older paint i want to get through it so we're just going to add a little bit of the fresher acrylic white to it and brighten it up i do kind of love how thick it is that's going to give us really good coverage uh-oh some gray got in it yikes well, we'll just scrape that off and stick towards the side near the white. Ooh, I'm starting to get the perfect yellow. Yeah, there we go. That's nice. So this is all yellow. You really want to use the shape of the brush to your advantage. You're trying to go along a line. You just line up your little square brush with that angle and then pull the paint in the direction you're trying to go. When you're trying to do a corner, the brush has a natural corner. So you just tuck it in and pull the paint the direction you want to go. Sharper angles can be a bit difficult, but if you go slow, you'll be fine. Or switch to a smaller brush with another angle. And then this. Mm 
and almost come straight down to the corner there. Beautiful. Yeah, Daryl, tell us your secret, Banana Tom. How did you get that swirl in your picture? <laughs> I wonder sometimes if it's just luck. He was like, I want to take a picture of a cool sentinel ship. So he bought them, brought them into space, hit the camera button, and everything froze. And he turned around, and he was just like, oh, oh my gosh, that's so cool. <laughs> you just never know. Everyone type in and tell him, and we may summon him. Yeah, I'm going to have to get back into Kosa Tsushima because I want, I love online mode of games, generally speaking. Today? You want to do that today? <laughs> Dimash got very excited. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Stella Raccoon, he's just a bit jaundiced. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. Poor raccoon, he needs more carrots in his diet. <laughs> Hi, Rayet, welcome. Thanks for coming by. Sorry, I was in the shower listening. <laughs> It worked. It did work. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Good to see you, Ray. You're at work? Well, I hope this helps the day go more quickly. Uh, did, did y'all catch Dimash's Skyrim VR stream yesterday and my amazing pun? <laughs> I'm still laughing about it. Uh, for those of you who may have missed it, I will tell it again now as a joke. All right, so. If you're missing something in Skyrim, what's the best place to look? The junk dragger. <laughs> you got to go back and watch his stream because yeah. his reaction was priceless. Yeah, it doesn't sound good when you retell it. Oh, no, it does too. No, the suit lady said it so freaking funny. But no one can hear the suit lady. I know, just me. So that I'll never be able to replicate it. <laughs> Well, and what did I say? I said, Where do you look when you can't find something in Skyrim? The junk dragger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. Oh. And then my Skyrim pun career was over. I can never top that. <laughs> I kept trying to think of more puns after that, and it just, it was like, it was just a desert. <laughs> it might have been a desert, but you found the diamond in the rough. Ah. Mm -hmm. It's just not as good. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's all about wasting a lot of time. There's like an extra 2,000 pictures that no one ever sees. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool, give me a shout and I'll make sure I'm on. Oh, great. Wait, what am I missing? Take half my game time in camera modes, for example. Death Stranding is 40 hour play. It took me 120 hours and I've still got more for the play. <laughs> oh my goodness. Tomorrow after Rod stream, Maddie? Ooh, yeah, that could be fun. For the unboxing? Yeah. Yeah, Nella sent us something, and there's treats for us inside, and so we will share that with y'all. Be fun, little hangout session. <laughs> All right, so this sentinel ship is looking great. It is a sentinel ship and not a raccoon in space. There are quite a few little finishing touches we've got coming up. And yes, I haven't painted in my little wings there, uh, which we should do. We should do that one. Let's see if I can't find a previously used brush that'll work. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> so yeah, I have my little black brush from before. We're just going to squeeze the water out. <laughs> you guys, I have to see if I can't show you Pie Wacket and then come back. Let's see. Let's Oh, that's, that's a pie wacket. Hello, kitty. Hello, kitty. What's up? How are you? Do you want to paint? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> All right. Uh, there we go. Oops, there it is. Boy, I gotta get better at that. This is a uh, y'all. This is my adorable little stuffed Bob Ross. My plushy Bob. He's always with me while we're painting. I love him. So. We'll fill in the little black wingtips on our ship. <laughs> Is Godfrey still in the box? <laughs> Did you see that picture? Yeah. So cute. Uh, he was, Godfrey was putting Piwacket in a box this morning. He was trying to make him look like Lacroix so we would throw him away. <laughs> Hi, Bobby Demon Lemon. Welcome. Thanks for coming on. Kitty. <laughs> Ray, it said, I miss, I mess up the place bad if I use paint or crayon. So I got a drawing pad and learning to draw like you, Medfish. Watched your previous streams to learn drawing. Oh, hey, that's awesome. I'm so glad you're getting creative. I still have a lot to learn with drawing as well. I just like to do it, even though my skill level is probably that of a middle schooler. <laughs> Maybe that's what I could do for Patreon. Whoever signs up gets free access to all my pictures. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I want access to 2,000 pictures you haven't edited. <laughs> but I do want, like, I would love, like, a digital, like, wallpaper of your really cool shots. That would be cool. <laughs> um, yeah, you should definitely do some digital rewards. 
So. Oh, this didn't mean, I wasn't telling you, like, I wasn't telling you nothing. I was doing something else. Okay. So okay. Sorry. No, that's okay. I was trying to interpret your hand signal. Producer's not supposed to talk. <laughs> um, cool. So I want to do the red bit in the ship now. Um, so I'll need my red paint. Just a tiny bit will do. Even though also we'll need the red for the jet stream. Nice small square brush. And I'm just going to look at my detail picture real quick. Yeah, so the red is sort of a triangle shape. From inside those little two black points that I had made, I'll refresh them when this is done. Drying. But then it comes just a little over halfway down. So that's, I like to sometimes when I start something and I'm not sure how far I want to go, I will look at where I, how far I want to go and start from there. And then make the two meet. That's about right. And I'm, I'm thinking I'll probably wind up bringing some white back in just to clean that up. And I might make this a little thicker, the black. Maybe just bring that red forward a little tiny bit more. Here we go. That feels right. I might, it seems to me now that the black needs to come down more, which I was going to do anyway. So that's perfect. The um, red lights on the tips of this need sort of a dry brushing effect with the red the center of the light is actually white though it's a red light so we're going to do our best to just make kind of a hazy red dry brushed circle here it sort of fades i have very little paint on the brush doing this and we'll be putting a white light right in the center of that so there's that and Similarly with the jet streams, actually, um, though it is harder to dry brush in a big swoopy shape. So I don't know. I'm going to just try it out. See what swoop just doesn't form naturally. The one swoop comes out from about here on the ship. I'm going to give myself a good little base line to start from and then I'm gonna go and because this is a flat tipped brush I'll be actually spinning the brush itself when I make the curve to try to keep it in a nice line so let's try this see what happens um it starts kind of a big arch and then it swoops into a small circle this can be nerve-wracking but you just gotta go for it and always remember every mistake is an opportunity for redesign 
You can paint back over it once it's dry and try again. So with very little paint on my brush, I'm just going to go for it. See? And it didn't turn out too bad. And I, I don't care that I don't see it super well. I see it just enough that when we go in with more color, I can follow this line that I've made with a nice fluid motion. And you would notice on the original picture, when the second swoop comes through, and I'm just using the tip of my brush to show you at the moment, then over right here, they get closer together. So you don't even have to worry about keeping these swoops at a super parallel looking shape because they do kind of get closer and then flare out again. So we'll see on our second swoop here how it turns out. Don't be scared, just try. So I'm making myself a little base to go from. And then we just go. Beautiful. And now we have our jet streams that we can go in and really make pop with some white and some more dry brushing. It's going to be awesome. So we'll do that now, actually, because I've got this red brush in my hand. We want to do major dry brushing effect. Very little paint on the brush. And we're just going to follow and deepen. The swoop I just made. But now I can just go a little at a time because I have my nice fluid shape to follow. You notice when I go back for more paint, I get a decent amount on there, but then I really wipe a lot of it off on my palette. Oh, you guys, I got to catch up with chat here. Bobby Demon Lemon came in. I can always teach you doodling. Yeah, no, teach me some doodling. Prepare yourself. Digital art, well, art, full stop is another spiral of time. Losing law. I've just started getting into it. Lurking, Bobby's lurking. Do you pick a new flower every stream or is the flower fake? It's a very pretty flower. This is a very fake flower. Yes. It's, I've had it a long time and I just like it a lot. And there you go. I did add a bow today. I have a nice big fun uh, bow. I, I, <laughs> I had, uh, I'm teaching students theater this month and I had some of them ask me if it was a Jojo Siwa bow. And I was like, mm, probably why Walmart has them for purchase, not sponsored, but 
Jojo did not originate the big bow in the hair of people. I would say, I would, I mean, for me, it's like a Minnie Mouse, uh, Daisy Duck kind of thing. Uh, way cooler. <laughs> but someone could probably date me there and be like, no, no, no. Check out this 1920s cartoon. I don't know. I don't know. But come on, people. Jeez. Dash doesn't like it. You know, we're gonna need to find that circle light because I need a circle light like right here. But that would be in the way of that camera. We gotta there's a lot to think about when doing two cameras. It's pretty awesome. Uh so raccoon become Wolverine. <laughs> Chili Dad's in the house. Hey, what's up? Thanks for stopping by. Is anyone else seeing Wolverine's helmet? Nice. Yes. It is really, it has totally become that. I can see that now. We need like a chink chink. <laughs> or was it snicked snicked? S-N-K-T, is that the one? Sneak sneak. The, uh, I can't remember how they write the sound of when his claws come out. It's something like that. Chink. <laughs> Multi-generation viewers. Yep, a mouse found it. <laughs> Even my logo drew myself in it after training myself by watching Madfish paint. I think it looks good. Oh, right. You're so sweet. Hi, boss. What's up? Welcome. I love painting. It's so relaxing. Every design is a creation in its own way. There is never a mistake. It's true. It's what I always say. <laughs> Um, for those of you who don't know, Ray at Cobra actually made my, my Madfish logo. And I did a little um, revamp recently just to make it look a little more like made of paint. But it's truly his original creation. So thank you, Ray at. What a great artist you are before you ever watched my videos. <laughs> I like how you can see like, the purple through the jet stream. Yeah, that's what the dry brushing really is a great, easy technique to use for texture and effect. Very awesome, thank you. My grandkids told me who Jojo is, right? Uh, the claws popping out. Oh, good, yeah, <laughs> thanks, Spider. Um, cool, so what's next here? We could go a couple of places. Um, I think I wanna, Let's see, that, eh, that's dry enough. I could revitalize some of the white here and bring in some of the white details on the metal of the ship and also some of the white brightness of the light in the jet stream and on the wingtips. So it looks like we're headed back to white with a detail brush. And I've got just the brush here. This one, I'm hoping anyway, it's got a longer bristles and they're quite soft. So I'm hoping that it'll have a nice flow as we follow our jet stream shape. So, and it's a little older brush, so the bristles are flared, but I think when we get some paint on it, we can fix that up a little bit. My white was beginning to dry on the palette, so I think we might need to get a little more paint. Yeah, the re revamp looks cool. Thanks, Rayet. It also has my artist signature in it. So that little um, M secret AD <laughs> thing, that is, that is my art signature. So this little crevice of white just needs to be Thickened back up. The yellow and red just made it a little too thin. I'm not sold on this brush yet. I might have to go to one of my other details, but we'll see.
when the kids I'm teaching theater to are done with it, I'll have to take pictures and send you guys or post it in the Discord of their work on the set. We painted the whole thing and it's supposed to be a forest and each kid got a chunk of forest to do. And so it's just this big abstract amalgamation of all these beautiful imaginations making one big forest. And it's all so different and unique and amazing. Uh, very magical. All right, so we want to get a little dot of white in the center of this light. And this light. And then we are creeping around this jet stream with some um, white over the red. I am still kind of going to let there be some dry brushing effect. Cl closer to the engine, I've gotten a little thicker with the white, which was intentional. Um, that's right where the source of the combustion is coming from. And then we can just naturally let it fade into a dry brushing look. Yeah, I wasn't super sold on this brush because it is a little old and those those bristles flare out. I do a little twist on the palette to encourage them to come together before applying. Um, just a little too much paint on there. Cool. I just rinsed out my little white brush. I'm going to see about using just a little bit of tiny bit of water to blend out the white into the red just a little bit. So it won't be so harsh in that center there and the two light colors become one. So now I'm making kind of a little watered down reddish. to go in over this white. A little too much. The brightness of the white is gonna shine through. But 
but it is still a nice bright red light. The red is what's so intimidating about the Sentinel, I think. It's how we know it's evil. Or so we're led to believe. I'm keeping my brush really wet and using just a light wash of color. Mostly water involved in this technique. Which is why I'm also able to kind of go back to the longer stroke on this and why I chose this kind of long, soft brush. So now we're going to go in with some detail, some finishing touches on the metal of the ship. So I'm going back to one of my really small detail brushes. And I'm going to want two actually, one for black and one for white. I need to make myself lunch and I'm sure my mom would like some lunch if she hasn't eaten. So y'all have a good day. Bye. Bye Bobby Demon Lemon. So nice to have you here. Thanks for coming by. Enjoy your lunch. I used to watch Einstein Christensen where he lives in a cow's behind when I was a kid. He is so creative. The thicker red looks good. Thanks Dariel. That's cool. I love group art like that. Yeah, it is special. We were so lucky that Rayet found us during the quarantine days. One of our earliest supporters. And also a great streamer. Play some really fun games. Some games that I'm scared to try. <laughs> So for our white details, I'm going to have to switch over to my detail photo real quick. And let's throw it up there uh, for you guys to see these details again as well. So the white places I really want to make pop are the lights on the wings, those little triangular lights. And then on the rear back square, center back rear of the ship, just those little lines you can see to define that some more. So that's my hope for what I'm about to do. <laughs> so those little triangles come in. They meet at the base of where the little wing tip flares out. So that's where we're going to start. I'll just put a little dot right there because that's where it's going to start. There and there. That's the point that we're going to. And so using that as a visual can help make this very thin triangular shape. And then make a quick little line straight to it. 
and another quick little line down to that point to meet and then kind of fill it in That's okay. It's not super um like geometrical. We'll see if we can't fix that up a little bit. I'm going to need to stand up to get the angle that is comfortable for me to paint this in. Hmm. There we have those lights looking pretty good. And now we want to do some straight lines here. And I'm going to use a technique that one might view as cheating, but I just don't. It's using a different tool and not a brush because they're little straight lines, right? So I'm just going to look around real quick for a business card or something like that. Anything paper shaped <laughs> that I can put paint on. You could, you could have sent me. I know, um, but it would be hard for you to I find I can be your hero, baby. Could you go find me some scissors? Do you want to go wide cam? Mm. They can see you. Sure. Wide cam. Hi. So what I found was the little back page. It's a little bit thick. Yeah. <laughs> It's a little thick back page of a spiral notebook. And so I'll be able to cut this into the shapes I need. And then we'll use that to make our nice straight lines. Why, thank you. Look at these scissors. These are crazy. Oh, gosh, I'm getting options now. Thank you for all the options. Is there another option? Oh, gosh. What a cheeky Dimash. I have three scissors to choose from. I'm going to go with the big ones. 
<laughs> Bob Ross got nothing on Maddie. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Jilly. Uh, let's see, catching up with chat here. I was afraid to play Alien Isolation. Gave up on it. Can't handle the jump scares. Oh, I understand that. So I'm just going to hold this up and kind of eyeball the thickness that I'm needing for these looks. So yeah, that one will fit nicely right here. A nice straight line there. And then the other lines, there's one sort of longish one and one sort of little. So I'm gonna imagine the long one is that. direction and the little one real like half of that and I'm literally just going to use this almost like a stamp so I'm going to dip the paper in the color I want and then line it up where I want it to go and do a little press and lift it away and there we go nice little line way easier than stressing about can my big old hand make that tiny little line I don't know <laughs> this looks way better and it's so much easier and kind of fun So two more longer lines there and then the skinnier lines are sort of offset on either side of the next two so we'll just do four little lines slightly offset and on either side of these other two we just put in I love painting with non-traditional painting tools. It's kind of fun. Big brain. <laughs> oh, seven, Maddie. OMG, I'm totally stealing this technique. <laughs> Happy little space rocks. Gotta go fast. Ah, scary ghost. He saw, the, he saw the producer to match flash. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, a ruler, I keep one with my paint kit. Yeah, that a ruler would help too. You can pull the straight lead, straight edge to where you want to do it and just paint along the ruler. I just don't trust my brushes. I need to get some new brushes, especially for the fine details. I need some. All of my brushes are well loved. <laughs> Yeah, teeny weeny things are the teeny weeny lines are super hard. And you can't, yeah, you can turn the painting as you go. For me, my brain is just like, I just need to stand and do this so you guys can see it at the angle it was meant to be. Um, good. So I'm gonna do some black detailing before I leave behind the um detailing with white. 
I just want to give a little texture to um there's some kind of like just dotted rail along here. And I'm going to let it fade. I don't really care too much about it. Just enough to give some shape to that, how it's separate from the rest of the ship. in the actual picture it's gray but I like kind of letting it pop and be a little more dramatic I'm also going to give a little light bounce on where this angle the the wing actually flares up just some dry brushing various spots to bring out the angles. Now I'm going to switch to black. And there are some little black lines on the white here, but I want to reinvigorate this little pointiness right here. And maybe trim off some of the red. Just right back here where it starts. Just really cleaned up those edges right in there. I'm going to give you a little up close because it does make a nice difference when you're seeing this in person. See that? Nice and sharp. Then Some lines here in the white. This might be my best detail brush, <laughs> which I'm glad I'm using for this. I'm putting barely any pressure on the tip of this brush. I'm not totally certain of what these are supposed to look like. 
but I'm just now at this point styling my own sentinel ship. Since this brush is being so successful at tiny lining details, I'm going to go ahead and bring some of those horizontal lines into this light. Cool. I like that side better than this side. <laughs> I might wind up doing a touch up on that, but it's looking pretty good. We do want to do some black detailing in the yellow, and I'm going to take another look at the close up picture just to get an idea of where all that goes. It almost has some cool, like, butterfly symmetry to it. So. <sighs> Let's try it. Let's try it out. See how it goes. It doesn't have to be perfect. Comes out. And this is the bit that looks like a butterfly to me. Sometimes when you're doing details, it's good to water down and almost make your paint more inky. It'll flow more and you'll get less of the dry brushing effect where you don't want it. This kind of... Oh no, it's not symmetrical anymore. Ah! Oh well. We'll just fix that later. Every mistake is an opportunity for redesign. <laughs> it's true. It's true. What we can do is just do a symmetrical marking match. And maybe color this in so that we remember our little raccoon friend. Got a little more water. Get this inky, flowy paint again.
And let's see, we'll just get a little more kind of electric metallic details in here. And remember, we're not trying to replicate a photo. The, the original thing is a photo. It's a screenshot. We are painting. So you have to be willing to let some things just be an abstract interpretation. I uh, originally was inspired to paint by Claude Monet, who was an impressionist. And so my style of painting tends to be very impressionistic. So whatever your style of painting is, I'm sure it usually falls into some kind of category that is awesome. You know, maybe you're cubist, maybe you're a uh, Dadaist. <laughs> There's a lot of different styles of painting you can try for, play with, be inspired by. I'm actually starting to see like the Lion King <laughs> here in the, in the ship. I'm going to switch back over to my little white detail brush and just give a little pop to the nose. Maybe just a couple little marks in these big open areas. And this is looking pretty cool. I feel like if I do more, I'm going to hate it. This is awesome. I really like how this has turned out. Uh, I think actually just a little white detail on the red here. And that is our sentinel ship. We've got the awesome curly Q jet stream, a beautiful background. We don't have any stars, but there's a lot in this thing. And I think probably what I would wind up doing 
as a finishing touch, which I won't do for you here. Maybe I'll do a content video to kind of show you where I would cut out some paper in this exact shape to protect the paintings that I've done. Probably won't protect the jet stream, but the planet and the asteroids and the ship and then do kind of a um, splatter painting with either a toothbrush or just a really wiry brush that I can do some flip, flippity. I don't know what that technique is called, but we'll call it flippity. Flippity splatter. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Um, to bring out some of the stars and the solar system. But I love the nebula. I love the ship. Tom, thank you for taking such an awesome picture. Uh, what? Doing that? Oh, no, because I uh, the technique would include covering the parts oh. that we don't want to have it. And that would just take too long. So thank you for joining me you all. I'm going to check in with chat before I leave you. Um, Maddie, when she was little, what are you talking about? You can cut to a wide there for me, Mr. Producer. <laughs> you guys, it's been so nice hanging with you. I was going to read your final comments here. My God, that is so good. Thank you, Dimash. It is faster and easier to use the little bitty, bitty bits of paper. Yeah, the dimension. It's just those details. Sometimes you just got to keep going at it. And you can take a break, too. You can take a break, come back, and add more details later. Because sometimes your brain just needs a rest. Or to just step back and look at it from a distance. To be like, oh, that big empty space needs something. And is anyone else seeing a face in the purple space behind the ship? Ooh, there's a face back there. That's cool. <laughs> Looks like a little girl. I see it. Maddie when she was little. <laughs> Can you tell I love Escher and Dolly? I do. And I love, that's why I love your art so much. Because I also love Escher and Dolly. I should totally find my Dolly inspired painting I've done once. And show it to you, Nella. It's 3.30 a.m. for me. Got to go to bed. Got some codings tomorrow. Well, have a wonderful sleep, Rhea. And thank you for coming by. I'm glad you caught the stream. Yes. Awesome, Maddie. Superb. Thanks, Warby. Looks awesome. Thank you, thank you. Liberty is the perfect description. Well, thanks for painting it, dude. Yeah, you're welcome, Tom. I It was a joy. This is super awesome. Thank you. Awesome work. Thanks again. That is amazeballs. Nice work, Maddie. Thank you, Biter. Nice, Maddie's laters. <laughs> Serial, thank you, everybody, for coming by who was here, Captain Steve, and all the rest. Boz, so many of you stopped by, and I so appreciate it. And I hope you like the new look. I know um, I was going for something else last week. If you didn't see it, do check it out, because, you know, maybe we'll go back to that one day. Grow my beard out again. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next Saturday for another Joy in Painting Games. I love a girl named Madeline, I know she loves me too.